Hello? Yeah, hey Daryl, look, yeah, it's just Sam. Um, I was just wondering if I could have a little chat with you. Just check in. I know, sorry, it is a little bit late, but you know how the business is. You know how it gets around here. Oh, yeah. Hey, Sam, wasn't wasn't exactly expecting this. Yeah, how are the kids? How are the kids? Oh, the kids? Yeah, the kids are fine. Actually, Laura... Sh oh, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm sure you're so proud of it. Oh, um, yeah, fantastic stuff. Oh, say congrats to her. What was it, Lara? Laura? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Whatever. Either one works. Um, as I was saying, yeah, I was thinking more of a basketball-related kind of thing. As you know, we're in a rebuild right now, as everyone knows, and... We've got a few chances to, you know, do some favours around the league to a couple of general managers, and I thought I'd do you a solid because you've done me a solid before, Chris Paul. I mean, we don't want to mention it, but yeah, you've done me a solid there. And I thought, look, we can do you a solid and then maybe you can return the favour at a later date. How does that sound? Yeah, what kind of what kind of favour were you thinking? Um, I'd be happy to give you Shake at the right price. Um, he's a young guy, he might fit your timeline. He could be nice coming off the bench. <laughs> Sorry, did I say something that was funny? Oh no, no, sorry. That no, that was that wasn't you. Um, I was watching something in the background. Uh, classic, classic Kramer. You know what he gets up to around here. Um, no, no, no. I wasn't thinking shake. I was thinking more of a a starting level player. I mean, if you could even call him that. Am I right? After his last playoff performance, yeah, like a Ben Simmons kind of kind of mold. Oh, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you've called up about Ben. Yeah. Look, the way I see it with Ben is. As I've said, as we all know, you're looking to win now. And I thought, I can take Ben off your, your hands. He's a very hefty contract. He's not someone who's really fitting what you're trying to do. And as you would know, Kemba from Boston brought him in. Kemba? No, I, I don't think he's the guy for us, Sam. I appreciate the gesture, but I just don't think Kemba's the guy for us. Yeah, I know. He's got a bad rap, but I've been talking to my specialist, the same specialist that, you know, looked after Chris Paul. He said Kemba's going to be healthy. He's the best guy we have. He's from Germany. He's from overseas. He doesn't even speak an ounce of English. But trust me, when it comes to knees, when it comes to anything lower body related, he's your guy. And we've got assurance from here. You can talk to him. You can get your people to talk to him. Kemba will be fine. Second half of the season, he averaged 20 and 5. It's overblown. Kemba is a guy... He's going to be back to his all-star self, and that's the exact kind of shot creator you want on the perimeter. So just just wondering if I'd throw that out there. I know Ben is someone who's a little bit maligned around here, and I was just thinking maybe a little Kemba for Ben swap, and then I'm sure we could add some picks in or someone of your choosing just to sweeten up the deal again. As I said, we're looking to do you a favor here. That's, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about doing a solid and returning a solid when needed. You know how it goes. Well, yeah, I mean, if you if you do think he's the best guy, if you think he's going to be able to get Kemba back to full health, I'll be happy to talk to him. What's his name again? Hans Gudentag. Yeah, look, um, I'll get my people onto Hans. If Kemba's as healthy as you say he is, then, I mean, we'll give it a shot, but no promises. Obviously, I'll have to talk to my people. I'll have to arrange a few things, but I appreciate you calling, Sam. Look, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to catch you later. I'm probably going to go back to bed. Oh, yeah, of course. I wasn't expecting you to agree over the phone or anything. No. Um, yeah, okay. That's all good. That's all good. I'll talk to you at a later date. Um, say hello to the kids. What was it? Lara? You mean Laura? Uh, yeah, same thing. Okay, have a good day. See you, Daryl. Bye. Yeah, okay, bye. Amber. I don't know how many times I can spell it out for you. Tyler Hero <laughs> does not interest us. But before you were looking to take him in a James deal. Yeah, that was before he had an Instagram model girlfriend, had a baby with her, lost all motivation, and couldn't put up double digits in a playoff series. So a little bit of different circumstances. I don't know what kind of opinion you thought we had of Tyler before. It's not the same. Sorry, I'm going to have to let you go. I'm not really here to talk about Tyler Hero right now at 3 a.m. Okay. All right. Catch you later, Andy. This happens every year. No, not someone failing to make a skit and <laughs> making themselves look silly. I'm talking about general managers making bad decisions. Now, one way of stopping it is subscribing. To no, I'm not even going to say that is bad. One way of stopping it is... Well, there isn't really one way of us stopping it. We don't really have a choice, but sorry, Daryl Morey, for making him look stupid. He is a decent general manager. He has done a good job. But in general, I mean, the Chris Paul situation, he was a bit of a bozo for that. And also not trading Ben Simmons for James Harden at the time. It's just kind of foolish. And I'm not coming here to say, look, I've cracked the code. I know all about this. I'll I've figured out what general managers for a hundred years couldn't figure out that you need to sell at the right time. It's not like they've got professionals from the financial field, the psychological field, the physical field. It's every single advisor you could have. But at the same time, 
sometimes <laughs> general managers do make bad decisions. Not sometimes, quite often. And a lot of these bad decisions come from the fact that they sell at the wrong time. Whether that's because of fans readying the pitchforks to burn Ben Simmons' jerseys to the ground or egg him if he steps foot on the court again in Philadelphia or it's the fact that Porzingis should be sent to China. Any of these things that we're going to talk about in this video, <laughs> those are reasons. There are other reasons. Like I said, general managers, they're human. They do make mistakes and some of those mistakes do come from selling players at the wrong time, trading these guys away when their value is is low. And I just think now is the perfect time to talk about some of these players because, I mean, we've seen all the memes. If you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram, if you're on any single app, oh, these guys are going to look great in China and Shanghai. I'm not even going to waste any time. Ben Simmons is the guy that we need to talk about first. I will talk about other guys and I'll talk about the flip side in terms of guys who I think you could probably sell at a good value now because we can't just look at it and in hindsight be like, oh yeah, well, he should have traded Ben Simmons. He's an idiot for doing that. But anyways, let's just talk about Ben Simmons now. I watched every single game of the 76ers Hawk series and I made fun of Simmons a lot because, I mean, there was a lot of reason to make fun of him because he made a lot of mistakes. But in general, through the first four games of this series, he was playing like a star level player. 10, 7, and 8. I know, those numbers don't exactly sound breathtaking. Simmons' numbers are never going to be breathtaking, I don't think. Still, he was playing like a star offensively. He was getting out in transition. He was attacking the rim, even in the half-court setting. When he had a matchup like a Gallinari who was too slow, or a Bogdanovich or a Trey Young who were too small, he was getting to the rim. He was attacking. You add into the fact that although Trey Young was putting up numbers, Trey Young can't be stopped. He wasn't exactly attacking Ben Simmons. He was trying to get screens. He was trying to get miscommunications. He was trying to get Ben Simmons on his hip. All of these things, which are perfectly legal, <laughs> absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's what you do every single time you face a good defender. But at the same time, Ben Simmons, when guarding Trey Young, did a great job. Ben Simmons, when switching out and rotating onto different guys, did a great job. Guys weren't exactly attacking him. His defense was fantastic. He is a fantastic defender. After that, yeah, the last three games were... <laughs> They were bad. <laughs> they were, whoa, <laughs> they were bad. They were a mess. They were a mess. Wasn't attacking in transition. He was scared. Let's be, let's be honest. Let's just get straight to the point. He was a scared man. He didn't want to go to the free throw line. He was shooting 30% from there. He didn't want to get hacked in transition because whenever he went in transition, he was getting hacked. Whenever he was in the half court, he was getting hacked. And that led to obviously the missed dunk, which is kind of the thing that culminated everything and everyone realized, oh, this is Ben Simmons is a rabble, he's a shell of himself. But there were other opportunities. There were other moments before where you saw and you're like, Ben's just not all there. At that time, he was, he was in a different world. And that's the mental side of things. That happens. People need to understand, yeah, these guys are six foot 10 and getting paid $35 million a year, but they still do have mental demons. And if you're shooting 30% from the line and you're going to get hacked in a high intensity playoff game, that's going to play on your mind. And that led to a pretty bad series. I wouldn't say it was a terrible series. I don't actually blame him for that series. There are a lot of other factors that went into Philly losing. Atlanta also played fantastically. And as I've said, and as everyone sees, Atlanta are the real deal. There's a lot of factors that went into it apart from Ben Simmons missing some free throws. But right now, Philly fans would have you believe he should be on the first plane out to literally any team that will throw a semi decent player at you. And I'm talking about the Malcolm Brogdon deal. I'm not trying to disrespect Malcolm Brogdon. I've talked about him before. I think he is just below that all-star tier. I think he's a good player. He's someone who's going to give you 20 and 6. He can play make. He can create his own shots. He's had his injury issues though. Also, let me make sure, let me make it clear, this, this trade hasn't been reported by the most reliable journalist. I haven't seen anything to back this up as absolutely definitive, but Malcolm Brogdon and a first round pick. I don't hate it for Philadelphia, but in general, this is a trade where you see a team recognizes Philadelphia have a fit issue with Simmons and Brogdon would be a better fit. He's not more talented. He hasn't made as many all-star games. He's not as young. He doesn't have as much upside or probably isn't as good right now in this moment, particularly on a team where you want someone to lead you. Ben Simmons can be that guy, I think, to a degree. I think we've seen it when Embiid goes down. He can give you 20 and 8 a game and great defense. Again, a lot of issues with him. He needs to fix those issues out. Because, but as of right now, I think Ben Simmons is a more valuable asset than Malcolm Brogdon. But this is teams recognizing that a team like Philadelphia, they have some issues with Simmons. They have fans that want him out. Will they sell him? Will they sell him now? Daryl Morey hasn't done that, but we've seen it in the past. Teams consistently do it. James can consistently done it. And maybe they'll do it with Simmons. We don't know. We don't even know if that was a real deal, but... We know right now that his value is lower than it was halfway through last year. 
three months ago, his value was really good. Now it is really bad. <laughs> That's kind of my assessment. And we'll talk about a couple of other guys, a couple of other guys in a little bit. But just before, as I said, we want to talk about a couple of guys that I think are of good value right now. Who would be good to sell right now? Just for an example, I look at a DeMontis Sabonis. I talked about him in an Indiana video just before, but he's someone who, similar to Simmons in Philadelphia, he's just not a great fit. Alongside Miles Turner, it just hasn't worked. I think he's a guy that you could trade because he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. Most of these guys, every guy that you're looking to trade has some kind of flaw. Defense is his flaw, and he's not a great fit. I think right now, you're getting him. He's still on a good contract. It's just the perfect time to sell. I think that's an idea. And then looking at a couple of the other guys, I don't want to make this video too long, but Tyler Hero, <laughs> Chris Tapps, Paul Zingas, two guys that have been talked about a lot as well. China, again, CBA, all of those things. Let's just talk about Paul Zingas because I think he's one who, he was misutilized in Dallas. Luca is undoubtedly the best player. I mean, that doesn't need to be said, but Paul Zingas still, he didn't get enough post touch-ups, wasn't enough pick and rolls run for him. He wasn't getting to the free throw line as much. There was a lot of issues in terms of just the way he was being played. But you look at what he did just last year in the bubble, six months ago, whenever it was, it wasn't that long ago. He was absolutely dominating. He was somebody who was putting up 13-10 in the eight bubble games. He did well in the Clippers series, even on a torn meniscus. He's someone that you could feasibly see come back next year and be significantly better. But internal pressures could lead to you seeing selling him at a very low value. Because if you've got Luca breathing down your neck and saying, I want him gone, then what can you say? You got to get him out. So, and then you've got fans, you've got ownership, you've got all of these guys breathing down your neck, which can lead to you trading Paul Zingas, And then all of a sudden, in a couple of years time, he looks like the player he did just eight months ago. These are all factors that go in, and these are all reasons why I think it is drastically important to sell at the right time. Something that everyone knows, but still trying to execute that, like Sam Presti has done in Oklahoma. I didn't mention it, but we've seen what he's done. Restoration projects. Kemba Walker, that was a little bit of a joke, but in six months' time, I could see Kemba Walker, his value would be right back up there, I could see, because I could see him having time off in OKC, getting to play free reigns, feel happy again, all of these things that go into playing well. All of a sudden, like Chris Paul last year, you can go from looking like the worst contract in the league to a contract people are happy to take if you get someone of the all-star caliber level, which Kemba Walker at just 31, you could easily see him getting back to. Anyways, I thought I'd make a video on that again. Not an Oscar award winning actor so apologies if that was hard to bear with but have a good day <laughs>